So today, it has come to my attention that powers around the world are already starting to use the coronavirus crisis, the COVID-19 crisis, in order to start seizing power from their respective countries. And quite a few outlets are reporting about the Prime Minister of Hungary, Viktor Orban, Apparently, Mr. Orban has won the right to rule by decree. It was granted by the parliament in Hungary. Now, there is something very, very interesting about the bill that passed to give the Prime Minister Orban ruled by decree power and is that the bill also well known as uh, let's see the bill passed on Monday almost entirely by votes from the Prime Minister's Nationalist Party okay and then the same bill that gave Mr. Orban the rule by decree power also said that the law imposes a maximum of five years prison time against those who intentionally spread false news or distorted truths. That it's that it's seen to be detrimental to the government's efforts to fight the virus and address its economic toll. So, obviously, this is, if you are an American, if you are pro probably a Canadian as well, hell, if you're an European, period, an Australian, and you are used to this concept of democracy, this is very scary. This stuff is very scary. Okay. Now, uh, the NPR also wrote a piece about this. And they said that the laws, the powers that, the, that Orban is getting include sidelining parliament and giving him rule by decree indefinitely. So for as long as they deem that there is a coronavirus crisis, they can invoke this law and, in other words, just rule like a tyrant, I guess. This is, again... Very scary. Very scary. Now, The Atlantic wrote a very interesting piece. And I think this lady, what's her name? Anne Applebaum. She, she explains, explains the whole situation the best. She says... There's nothing new about the sudden enthusiasm for aggressive government intervention during a health crisis. Throughout history, pandemics have led to an expansion of the power of the state. And so throughout history, these moments like this have been moments of shift, of moments in which the whole entire fabric of the social norm pivots not only and and this is I've heard all kinds of different people pointing this same thing out things happen both in terms of politics and economics as a result of these world pandemic events it also happens in terms of the environment there is a flip 
there is also something that she points out, the author of this piece in the Atlantic. She says that at least while they are frightened, people complied. At times when people fear death, they go along with measures that they believe, rightly or wrongly, will save them, even if that means a loss of freedom. Such, such measures have been popular in the past. Liberals, libertarians, democrats, and freedom lovers of all kinds should not fool themselves. They will be popular now, too. So this is a warning. And especially in, in a place like America, where we like strong leaders, this is, this is very concerning. It's very concerning because, I mean, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different because of the way that power, that political power is structured in the United States. Because we have different states and the different states govern themselves separately from the federal state, from the federal government. So it's a little bit different. But there is the potential, I mean, we are already seeing it. We have checkpoints in so certain parts of the country. My family lives, I, uh, I live in New York, my family lives in Florida. Um... I always keep abreast of what's going on down there, and now they have a curfew. They have to be in some parts of, of Florida. They have curfews, and they have to be home by 8. There are checkpoints in interstates, uh, in state lines. Like if you're coming from Georgia down to Florida, you're passing a checkpoint. That's for damn sure. And it, stuff like that is also happening in other states. Now, she said something, uh, some other, she made another point that I found. Okay, so she, here she is, uh, she's going over a few European countries who have taken measures somewhat similar to what's happening in Hungary, even though there are no ceasing power as blatantly as the Hungarian prime minister did. But she talks about uh, a similar case in Israel where Benjamin Netanyahu, let me see if I can, it's right here, still prime minister despite having lost a recent election, has enacted an emergency decree that allows him to postpone the start of his own criminal trial and that prevents the newly elected Israel parliament in which the opposition has a majority from convening. And she also talks about Italy where, and she says, where is it? She talks about how um, Italians have taken uh, a very strong stance when it comes to the lockdown and that's pretty much in the same vein as what's happening in Hungary and Israel. And then she goes to talk about America and then she says, Americans should be prepared for their fellow citizens to react the same way. Meaning, for American citizens, for the American people to be compla complacent and to comply when, well, and I use the word when, when I should be using the word if, if stuff like that happens too, if the government seizes power in such a way that A, a some form of tyrannical government comes out of all of this and just using as a, the using the the pandemic as an excuse to for the government to become a, a tyrannical government 
she goes on saying, our federal system does give us some advantage. Quarantine powers vary from state to state. Those who enforce them are more likely to be state police than federal security services. services. But the American president has already proved that he prefers gesture politics to real measures, border closures to the mass production of masks and test kits. More to the point, he has a longer record. The Ukraine scandal showed us that Trump has little respect for rule of, for rule of law. And the Mueller investigation showed us that he cares little for the independence of the Department of Justice. He has already abused government power for political reasons, and he has a loud clack of supporters who have applauded him for doing so. And that is quite true. There is this sort of romanticism in America with strong leaders, and I think that's the reason why Trump also prizes so much um, the guy from North Korea. But, I mean, that is quite eye-opening. It is happening all across the world. Because these are just the cases. I mean, there are so many things happening all at once that it's so hard to keep track of every little thing that's happening. But... And at the same time, you wonder, okay, so this is happening, but if it happens here, what can I do? What are we going to do? Are we even going to do anything about it? And because people are scared, most likely the answer to that question is no. People are not going to do anything about it. They're just going to take it. Because they are in the middle of... A lot of people are having panic attacks and a lot of people are committing suicide. It's quite an ordeal that we're going through. For some people, it's nothing. I mean, some kids are not really taking the situation seriously and they're going on spring break and they're coming back home, bringing the virus and spreading it, spreading it across family members. But, and that is concerning, of course. But then there is this other side of Are we witnessing a requiem for the American Republic that supposedly has a tradition of democracy? We believe that we are a democracy. We are a democratic republic. But are we just... Witnessing, witnessing the last pangs of it, I mean, it's really scary. And I remember watching someone, and I never forget the name of the people, but I, it, was, it was a very well-made video, very well edited. And I think it was a girl. Um, and she was talking about Trump being the last... Oh, no, wait, I think it was Michael Moore who said that Trump... He thinks that Trump is going to be the last president of the United States. Quite prophetic. But obviously, these people have access to information that you and I don't. And a lot of people on YouTube have made videos about this idea that Trump might be the last president of the United States, at least the United States as we know it. And... Only God knows what's going to come out of the other end when this whole thing is over. Anyways, I'm, I'm, this is longer than what I wanted it to be. But I just wanted to put it out there. I wanted people to become aware that the power grab is happening all over the place. And it was even attempted. Here in the United States a few days ago when the executive power was asking the legislative power, the legislative brand, I should say, the executive brand asked the legislative 
branch to grant certain powers, but the legislative branch said no. And that is a good sign. That's a very good sign, but, you know, we still have to be vigilant and we have to pay attention to what's going on. Power grabs are definitely going to become something to watch out for. Anyways, I, I think they already are something to watch out for. Anyways, um, this is what I got for you right now. If you liked this video, you made it this far, please consider su subscribing. Um, it helps the channel. I appreciate your support. Thank you and signing out.